Greetings ladies and gentlemen, welcome to some more 25 Days of Go. I'm Dwyer and I hope you're all having a wonderful holiday season. Today we are not going to go over Proverbs, today I'm going to go back and start listening to some of your suggestions that you've been giving uh, throughout the month. And today we are going to go with Alexander Terry who asked, or who suggested, that quote, you should make some 25 days on various approaches to openings for beginners such as Orthodox and Chinese. All right, Alexander Terry, that seems easy enough to do. Let's go ahead and get that out of the way. Let's see what corner to go with today. I, let's go with this one. Let's say that we are going to go with, um, let's go with Orthodox first. Let's go with Orthodox first. Orthodox first can, of course, be three, dual 3-4 three, four, or 4-4 four, four, or 3-4. It really depends on what you want to do. Let's go over both really quick. So you have an Orthodox and you're looking to approach this. Generally speaking, you probably want to avoid playing here unless you're looking for your opponent to get into a framework verse framework kind of game because what you are inviting is sort of the enclosure and the extension. You can of course fight that if you so wish. Just note that you will be inviting not only enclosures with extensions, but you'll also be inviting a double wing formation here. And contrary to popular belief, if you actually just say this is okay because I'm gonna take Tengen for myself and my frameworks, everybody's uh you know intimidating as my opponents then I think it's not quite true. This amount of solid territory that your opponent has, the ease which you can actually solidify that territory, probably not a good thing to do. Uh, so generally speaking, we typically don't do something like this. And we have been doing one of two things. Uh, option one, a little bit old school, is to split this because uh, there is a proverb our opponent's uh, large point is probably ours as well. He wants to play here, so we're going to play there instead. And from here, you might be poked in either direction. Just remember to extend, and you will be fine. I will advise, however, that if you do this particular Jiseki, what will happen is he is probably going to... Okay, white gets moves too. Forgot about that one, sorry. He will probably try to push you in this direction to get large knight and enclosure. So if you want to avoid enclosure and extension completely, what you may want to consider doing, and I keep taking White's moves off the board as if he does not get them. What you may want to consider doing is playing the approach on the inside like this from here. Just choose to settle as quickly as possible. Settling is okay, don't, not giving your opponent two moves. Just choose to settle as quickly as possible, and it's really, really difficult to go wrong. If you are pincered, I would advise against jumping out because it is always very difficult to uh, make this wall be useful, especially since we know Territory Boy over here doesn't mind getting third line territory over here, it's completely fine. You're going to be trying to figure out what this wall is used for when we already have two strong corners on the field. That'll be very, very difficult. Not saying impossible, but I will say it's very, very difficult. So if you are pincered, I wouldn't jump up, and instead I would go into the 3-3 nice, simple, and easy. At this point, you'll notice that your opponent's going to get a wall. Just keep in mind that this shoulder hit later might be very, very good for you if he doesn't decide to take it for himself. That's a great way to reduce, and the game can continue from there. If, on the other hand, this is a 3-4 stone, as we see here, in the Orthodox, we will not play here because we are inviting, uh, at this point, a full-fledged enclosure, complete with a wonderful extension on the board. We do not want to give that away to our opponent. Instead, we are going to simply enclose here. You might say, but wait, what if our opponent approaches or pincers? That is completely fine. Just choose to settle here. Just settle this group, and all they really have is this kind of development, so you know where to consider reducing. You can do that, for example, later on by playing back here, because there's still two space extension potential. You could do it by attaching, as we know our proverbs now. We can attach to the strong thing to try to make something else. Or maybe we never have to worry about that ever, and maybe the only use that that's going to be is for, you know, 
a threat while we grow our own thing. All of these are completely great ideas. If on the other hand your opponent decides to simply take territory, then what you are wind up what you're gonna wind up doing is uh, making the exchange, connecting here, extending, and easy Joseki, right? Now, things are going to change a little bit uh, on the Chinese. You did say just the Chinese, right? E yes. No. Yes. No. Yes, you did. So Chinese here. The wonderful thing about the Chinese... Uh, let's change it around for now. Zoop. No, actually, let's not change it around for now. Let's keep it there. Wonderful thing about the Chinese is that... Do whatever you want. Do whatever you want. What you're not looking to do is play here, because if you play here, you'll notice that you're pincered, so now it's quickly a three to one situation. That's a little tough, little tough, little tough. So we're looking to not play that. We're looking to get our opponent to play that instead. Because if we play this, then we know later on we might be able to go back and reduce, right? With an invasion point, poke point, attachment to sacrifice and build a wall here and extend a lot of options a lot of options so to that end you can play almost whatever you want you can play almost whatever you want there's been so many different uh, moves played uh, in reference to the dealing with the Chinese Fuseki that you can play whatever you want you want to play here bam go ahead and do it who cares uh, if you want to play something a little bit more aggressive you can approach from the outside you usually don't do this but here you can because we don't want to play this move so you can approach from the outside and just be like, bam, uh, you got what I wanted. Now I'm going to take an extension here. And you better approach, otherwise I'm going to have extension and um, enclosure here. That's working well with each other. So that's completely fine too. Uh, beginners, huh? Beginners. All I will say is if you see an approach here, it's not incorrect, but the reasons for that not sure if that's very beginnerish. I guess you can play here. Playing here is okay too. Playing here is all right as well. I suppose. You know what? Scrub that. For beginners, I'm going to advise you to mostly concern yourself with this stone, with this stone. And that's taking an enclosure, larger, small, I don't care. Taking a start point to make certain that your opponent can't do that and force you to play back here, that's fine too. Ah, dropping stones all over the place. So yeah, one of the small knights, one of the uh, knights rather, larger, small, star point, anything that you can use to keep this from, you know, building up a very, very large area. If you're feeling aggressive, you can even approach closer in. Uh, do beware about approaching low, though, because the shoulder hit here to make this area large, attacking your opponent's stones to gain territory, as we see here. Uh, that is, in fact, a proverb that we must, 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 must be aware of. Let's just play here real quick. Why not? Let's just play this nice and easy. You can see here, for example, if we play too low, the shoulder hit kind of invites four, five, six line territory. Uh, could invite a little bit more than that, depending on how aggressive our opponent's feeling. Now it could invite seventh line territory that we may have to go back and reduce, so we need to be very, very careful about that. We don't want to invite this, I think, if we can avoid it. So, hi, a lot easier to do. Not going to see, like, fifth line shoulder hits. That'd be a little bit strange. Probably just going to see an enclosure, and then you can still grab your base. It's all easy-peasy. All easy-peasy. In the event the worst case scenario happens and your opponent does manage to get something back here and you do have to play here, just notice that what we want to do is settle as fast as humanly possible. So to that end, you're looking at this sort of situation where you're going to just extend, get a bit of a base for yourself, and come on out, if at all possible. Your opponent may poke, of course. It's 
but that is completely fine because we can simply settle here nice and easy peasy. Now that we've enlarged our base, we can go back and connect. We've got enough room to live here theoretically and we're out. So that's about the best situation that you can possibly hope for. Uh, you might say, but we made our opponent, you know, he has some territory here, made our opponent get uh, stronger over here. But that's about all. We're gonna, we have to expect that because, I mean, this area was really, really strong for black and then we invaded it. So the fact that we're still undercut, uh, whatever, we're not dead right now. So it's a win in our book. Black deserves a lot from all of his investment there. And so, yeah, he's going to get it. Variations like this are why we often see, for example, the effort to kind of like reduce this early on. So we don't see that huge development uh, everywhere instead. It's really, really good for black. And though you did not request it, I will give one more since we have the field already developed. And that is the Kobayashi. Kobayashi you want to respect because if we approach too close, it's really easy to develop this way, nice and solidly. If we approach too close, again, we see that reflected here. Really, really easy to, you know, go ahead and uh, just get all that nice and strong. So we usually approach a little bit further away. And the idea here is to simply, once again, just go and settle as quickly as possible without making this too, too strong, too strong. If our opponent wants to grow, which might be a possibility, it's going to be at the cost of giving us territory, so that's okay. Just note that you want to not avoid approaching because, once again, if your opponent gets the enclosure, enclosure and extension pretty, pretty large. So when you see something like this in the field, you definitely don't want to ignore the three four stone it is growing it's getting enclosures and if you're not careful it can develop into something very very large you don't really know what your opponent's going to pick but it's all pretty scary stuff three four stones very important know how to approach them But all right, Alexander Terry, I hope I was able to answer some of your questions on uh, how beginners should be approaching these various fuseki. Of course, I've got videos on them uh, in greater detail. You can look them up and find out a bit more detail about how uh, the fuseki is played, how to approach it properly, common sequences, all that good stuff, and reasons for all those things. In the meantime, I hope everyone else enjoyed the video. I hope, of course, you've been enjoying 25 Days of Go and that you are having a great holiday season. I will, of course, see you tomorrow for day 21. So until then, take care, everyone.